18 cognitive mechanics and specifically the soul temple um lecture so yeah the soul temple uh, episode are you guys even able to hear me properly i'd like to know because i have like no clue if you guys can even hear me at all and it's i'm trying to uh test out the mobile live streaming setup because i want to be able to live stream from a mobile point of view and then just not even use my office whatsoever I'm trying to get to that perspective trying to be completely officeless and which means ultimately the green screen would be going away but i kind of don't care about that so it's not really that big of a deal and glad to hear that the audio is good just kind of doing the mobile studio thing. Plus, I want to be able to live stream uh, while like walking in nature and live streaming from uh, certain locations as well, instead of just being stuck with the screen all the time. I mean, the screen is just, I mean, it's really boring just seeing a talking head all day long. So trying to avoid the whole talking head approach and trying something uh, a little bit different. So yeah, thank you all. I got... Um, I got another device here actually allowing me to see the uh, chat just to kind of make it a little bit easier and given the complexity of uh, the temple lectures it's one of the few lectures that we actually have uh, prepared some notes uh, to actually make sure that i'm being on point with the specific content that's being offered here so just uh i don't know just a sign of growth i guess uh for uh, the channel and ultimately uh, the podcast so but yeah, hopefully it uh, continues to work out for us. That and uh, this should also help me uh, save a considerable amount of money on uh, fuel as well. Because yeah, the gas prices are nothing short of pure insanity uh, today. Then again, you know, the price of gasoline is insanely manipulated. So it's basically a faux price or a, a, a fake price. So it doesn't matter. Speaking about fake, uh, we're going to be talking about the Soul Temple today, and uh, none so fake as the uh, Soul Temple, right? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the reason why I'm actually saying that is because from a Soul Temple perspective, the Soul Temple is basically a temple that is completely fixated on the idea of identity and individuation. but. Ultimately, it's it's really the the temple of the four sides or the four temples uh, that contain its four sides of the mind, which is the ENFP, INFJ, ESTP, ISTJ types. Those four types represent a quartet, and then put together, they represent uh, one of the four temples. They are the soul temple, which is like the ego temple uh, to the temple that is uh, you know for humanity from a perception function point of view they rec they the soul temple represents the input temple and in service of extroverted intuition uh basically so just to kind of give you an idea as to how that works or why it works i'm actually kind of fascinated right now because i'm able to live stream while simultaneously using my phone as a mobile hotspot to be able to provide internet connection for my other devices while I'm live streaming to you at the exact same point in time. That's pretty freaking cool. I haven't really load tested my gear like this before, so I'm pretty happy about having that opportunity. So yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, the Soul Temple, like, I mean, how you get the temples ultimately is that you have to, you know, look at any of the four sides of the mind. You pick any person, you type them, find out what their ego is, and you mean you instantly know what their subconscious is, their unconscious, and you also conscience conscious the, and uh, their super ego. You know these things about them, which is pretty cool. It's nice to know those things about people, but then all four of those sides of their mind are shared with four other types. And any of those other types, like, hey, you know, if your ISTJ is your ego, you still have the same other four sides. If ESTP is your ego, you still have the same other four sides, same with INFJ, same with ENFP, etc. And uh, 
knowing these different things is important because, you know, hey, you know, these types end up behaving in a similar manner up to a certain point. They, uh, they, they commit uh, sin in the same way. They also are virtuous in the same way as people. They have a lot of the same uh, hangups and go through a lot of the same struggles in life and end up ultimately working together as a temple to fulfill the purpose of the temple itself. And like I said, the soul temple's purpose ultimately as basically like the ego side, as it were, of uh, the four temples, the ego temple of humanity itself uh, even though, like, doesn't exactly the four temples don't exactly behave in the same way, it's still necessary to understand. Uh, the reason why is is that like it ultimately is primary. It's like a it's a it has primacy over the other four sides, and it is still an abstract temple. It is the extroverted intuition related temple, and it's funny because when you consider. ESTPs and ISTJs, they're actually pretty abstract, even though they're concrete types. They have an abstract slant about them. It's kind of like Railgun being an ESTP. And then all of a sudden it's just like, okay, yeah, I don't want to go in that building because there could be like spooky memories attached to that building, uh, etc. So it's, it's a problem. Um, but yeah, again, uh, the Soul Temple prioritizes the essence and quality of individuality, but ultimately it is the container for humanity's identity or how identity is um, developed or uh, administered or expressed uh, as an example to humanity uh, or also to help uh, humanity understand what its identity actually is it really comes down to to identity or basically an understanding of the self um, the soul basically is the best representation of the self psychologically speaking and the soul temple types are obsessed with the self they are obsessed with uh identity and ultimately themselves as individuals while helping other people explore that same individuality that's ultimately the point of the soul temple and it does this in a very abstract expert intuitive way because that is the function the perception function that it at least serves but also uh, another aspect of like the individuation like from an identity perspective is that it also represents uh, the decision making function of introverted feeling uh, the soul temple definitely serves at the feet of introverted feeling and uh, it's kind of interesting because if you think about the soul temple ne plus fi it's it's basically representational of the enfp type which means the enfp type out of all the 16 types is really the true starter the truest starter the most abstract of all the types and that's why it is one of the most important of the 16 types and don't get me wrong all of the 16 types are important but the enfp in my opinion, and this is an opinion, is very special to the point of being like extra special. I was just explaining this to like an INFP yesterday about how ENFPs, uh, for example, like without them, like it's kind of hard for like humanity to actually find absolution or ultimately receive mercy. And then as a result, humanity doesn't have a future. And that's ultimately one of the reasons why it's so important to have ENFPs uh, within that purpose. You know, so a lot of people just, they don't often understand that. But, uh, you know, because it's so abstract, oftentimes, you know, the soul temple looks at what is immaterial. I mean, identity and individuation is technically immaterial. So trying to understand a person's, you know, character is very hard to deal with. And character is like the container or the vessel of a person's identity. And soul temple types understand that more than any of the uh, the 16 types entirely. So, uh, so the most important thing in life to them and ultimately the driving force uh, for the soul temple is at the end of the day, it is character, the container of, um, of one's individuation or one's identity basically. So let's actually define. Uh, so uh, let's, let's actually define what character actually means. So, like dictionary.com defines character as quote the aggregate of features and traits that form the individual nature of some person or thing, 
or one such feature or trait or a characteristic, uh, a moral or ethical uh, quality. And that's really important because you, you notice just like how abstract the concept of character is in of its own right. And because character uh, basically defines as well as demonstrates, it not just defines, it also demonstrates what the soul temple actually is about. You could see how like character itself is an abstract concept and the soul temple serves at the feet of an abstract concept because it itself is abstract. Yes, you may be an ESTP. Yes, you may be an ISTJ, but everything they do still ultimately leads to an abstract outcome, which I really find fascinating given how concrete those types actually are. So please keep that in mind. Oftentimes, you know, this can actually lead to mistyping because I don't know how many times people have mistyped ISTJs into INTJs, for example. And, it, and this is literally why. It's because they're noticing how abstract the soul temple is as the ISTJ person they're typing is actually um, demonstrating abstract behavior because guess what? The four sides of their mind are part of the soul temple, which is an abstract temple. And it's important to understand or at least keep track of that particular characteristic, right? So keep that in mind. So uh, there's still uh, two aspects of character, you know, regardless of the aforementioned uh, definition. And the first one is truth and character. The types within the soul temple expect others to be genuine. And sincerity is often met with a deadly sin of wrath. This first type of character is not about good or bad, but true character. Soul temple types sometimes enable bad behavior if the person is being genuine. I mean, this is this is 100% true. My ESTP wife does this to me all the time. Because uh, it's, it's, a, it's like a, a demand for authenticity, a, a complete total demand for authenticity, which is hilarious to me because I oftentimes see soul temple people being entirely inauthentic, but they have the expectation or the demand uh, for authenticity from other people. And the reason why sometimes they have a hard time coming off authentic or at least genuine is because they have yet to figure out or discover what their actual identity is. I mean, this is especially hard for INFJs and ESTPs, given how external they are. Uh, you have the most uh, external of the extroverts and the most external of the introverts with both of those types within the soul temple. And because of how external they are, it's so hard for them to actually see themselves. And, you know, for them, oftentimes they have to imagine like there's this little camera crew following them around their life, actually. Uh, and then it's as if they have to watch themselves on a television inside of their own heads as they're trying to abstract their own sense of self, you know, their own sense of character, their own sense of uh, individuality and individuation. And they're not really able to do that. It's extremely difficult. And it's one of the reasons why expert sensing inferior within INFJs also really, really struggle with fear of failure because they're constantly trying to imagine themselves looking at their own selves from a third person point of view. And it really makes it difficult uh, for them to live with themselves over time because of that constant mental challenge of literally imagining themselves a third person looking at them from the outside in. It is extremely mentally taxing. At least it would be for me. Maybe it's not for them. But oh my God, I could not imagine living my life that way. Yeah, like no thank you. So that would, that would be an issue. Um, so the second aspect of character is strength of character. This focus eventually becomes uh, on developing and other people's strength of character, such as moral integrity, not just honest character. So... So that that's important. Like, you know, ESTPs, INFJs, they love to test other people's integrity. I mean, the INFJ virtue, if we're looking at virtue and vice from season seven, is all about integrity versus corruption. And ESTP is all about testing structural integrity. So that's really, really important. From an ISTJ, ENFP standpoint, they're, you know, it's all about, okay, are you genuine? You know, like, hey, you know, he's got a point. You know, it may not be... Uh, ethical or moral but he's got a point you know he's being honest he's being real here you know give me the raw and real you know and the raw and real is mega important to those types and they reward that because it's like hey 
you know, at least you have, you're a person who has good character because at least you're honest, at least you're genuine, you know, and then same thing would go like, you know, from an INFJ ESTP perspective, it's like, hey, you have some integrity, you're not corrupt, you know, you're the same person regardless of whatever situation you're in. And that oftentimes uh, is also heavily rewarded by the soul temple people when it comes to people that they meet. You know, and of course, if they meet people who are lacking integrity, noticing that regardless of, you know, when, when a situation or an environment or people, uh, you know, change and they watch how a person changes as well as if they're like wearing a mask or something or they're being fake, they just can't handle it. And they will basically, they'll seek to destroy the other person and their wrath will come out. The wrath, deadly sin will just absolutely come out and destroy that other person because it's like, hey, you are lacking structural integrity, so I'm just going to knock you down, forcing you to have to rebuild yourself after the fact, which, if you think about it, is a very fascinating uh, point of view. Very fascinating point of view. All right. So the Soul Temple ultimately believes, it has like this core belief, it ultimately believes that honest character leads to good character, and good character is always being true to oneself, which is interesting like I, I could see how that that may actually go um you know for each of the four types within the soul temple however when you actually consider practical application and at least life as we know it especially life in western society does that always actually happen does the soul temple types actually demonstrate that belief on a regular basis the answer is really no they actually don't but it's it's an ideal that they all four tend to strive for in some capacity. Oftentimes, I see ESTPs not being true to themselves, given to how external they are and how they just let their iffy child just be, you know, walked all over by other people on a consistent basis, where they mean gaslit by others to believe false things about themselves. Guess what? INFJs have the exact same problem. And it's so interesting to watch the ENFPs and ICJs be the gaslighters in those particular situations, which can also be a problem as well. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, oftentimes the ISTJ and the ENFP often imagine to themselves that they are being true to themselves when they aren't actually because they end up getting stuck in their comfort zone and not willing to actually go or go into entirely new directions, which can also be very frustrating. I'm actually trying to look at hiring an ISTJ right now to do transcription uh, for us. And uh, do I, do I like, you know, and, and it's interesting because I've hired other ISTJs in the past to do uh, that particular uh, function for us uh, at the CSJ community to make sure that we are getting the videos transcribed and their transcriptions posted on our blog at csjoseph.life. And uh, eventually they just are like, oh, yeah, you know, I can do it. I could do it. But then then they don't. They 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 really don't. You know, so it it really it really depends because like are they really being true to themselves well if they've never done it before okay yeah but if they have done it before are they really gonna be able to keep it up is that really being true to themselves or are they being desperate in some other way like how do you look at that is there is it really all about money or you know so it there's so many factors that go into that and it's important to just keep that in mind but again while they have that belief that honest character leads to good character or good character is always being true to oneself getting them to actually stay honest and getting them to actually be true to themselves that's an entirely different pickle at the end of the day it's still a belief it doesn't mean it happens a hundred percent of the time you know so like and, and this is important to note like when you're looking at the temples folks just don't forget like these are still ultimately dynamics these are not statics and if you guys treat this like statics you're going to get lost and you're also going to probably mistype people because you can actually use the temples to type people on a regular basis it's pretty cool so why is the soul a temple for the enfp infj estp and istj so the idea of like a temple it's a religious or a sacred concept for the types of the soul temple they view the world's problems and an individual's problems as much as their own problems i mean of course you got estp and infj they often are looking at everyone else's problems and then electing themselves sometimes arrogantly the solver of those problems ultimately but at the end of the day it uh you know, it, it's all about, uh, you know, those awareness of problems and getting them to be aware of their own problems. Well, that too can also be 
really difficult. It, it can be pretty, pretty difficult. So, so yeah. Um, let's see here. Let's let's continue on. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not like gonna go like turn this into like a hour and a half long episode. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to make sure I'm following the notes appropriately. So, so yeah. Uh, but ultimately, like these types view problems, be it the world's problems, individual problems. Hopefully, they would view their own problems this way. But it's stemming from people not caring about their identity or quality of character, or by judging people properly by the content of their character. And I could definitely see that. Like, for example, one of the things that I noticed really, really bothers the Soul Temple is, for example, racial profiling, right? When like a police officer uh, just assumes you're up to no good because you fit a particular profile of someone who may have or has uh, committed a crime in the past. And then they're making and they're treating you as if they're assuming that you're about to commit the same or a similar or any crime thereof, right? A form of profiling. And that's, you know, like that's bullshit that that happens. And this is ultimately what the soul temple actually hates because people are making assumptions about other people's character instead of actually taking the time to get to know people or at least uh, be willing to judge people on the content of their character, their actual content of their character, instead of just making these prejudicial uh, uh, prejudgment, prejudging uh, uh, decisions about other people that are not actually based on anything factual in any remote way, shape, or form. It just absolutely pisses off the soul temple. Yet, at the same time, it's hilarious because the soul temple especially ISTJs and ENFPs with the wrath deadly sin are often the first people to end up discriminating. So as much as they actually hate the problem that would come from something like racial profiling, guess what? It's ISTJs and ENFPs and by proxy ESTPs and INFJs who are actually causing the problem and causing the racial profiling. If you actually think about it, so it's interesting. It, it, it's this. It's a form of temple-based cognitive projection where the intrinsic values and principles that are attached to each uh, temple are projected onto other people and can be used for good and for bad simultaneously. For immoral reasons, amoral reasons, moral reasons, ethical reasons, unethical reasons, it doesn't matter. Every single thing is, uh, you know, applied. You know, so the soul temple can definitely be used for evil in as much as it can be used for good. This is just ultimately, you have to understand that the temples are a very neutral thing. It's not about good versus evil. It really isn't. And if people assume that that's the case, well, you're going to get lost and that's not the case at all. Okay, so just be aware of that. So, okay, I just, I think I mentioned a few things here. Um... So, oh, another point here, you know, recognize that three quarters of the types in the soul temple are actually affiliative. And even the ESTP, the pragmatic one, still prioritizes moral quality and consistency of those around them. Absolutely, the ESTP does. The problem is, though, is that the ESTP rarely does it for themselves. And that's because of how external they are. They really need to be around other people so that they can watch how other people are behaving so that they can compare themselves to those other people. And that's one of the things that I find extremely frustrating with the Soul Temple. The Soul Temple is all about comparing themselves to other people. It's ridiculous. You know, I, I often thought that INTJs like uh, were the absolute worst. And in particular, INTJ women were the absolute worst at comparing themselves to others. But that's not true. It's absolutely not true. It, the soul temple types have it way worse. Everything is all about comparing to other people and especially the ESTP and the INFJ because oftentimes they're so unaware of themselves that they end up rejecting themselves entirely that they have to literally look at what other people are doing and seeing how other people are behaving so that they can model after other people's behavior that they think, think is ultimately acceptable. And that's a problem. That, that could be a huge issue. And that's not something like we want or something that we're going to end up going for, you know, in the long run. But it just bothers me. It just really, really bothers me how much soul temple types have to be comparing themselves to other people. And the thing is, is that as much as I would enjoy judging them for it, 
as much as I would enjoy that, I still have to admit that they need to compare themselves to other people. They kind of need to. Because it's really the only way they're going to grow. Which is entirely frustrating to me. Because, you know, but then again, you know, I'm kind of biased. You know, I'm blessed with introverted sensing. I have introverted sensing inferior. So I can at least remember where I was before introverted sensing combined with introverted thinking. So it's like, hey, I have a past. I can always adjust myself. But then again, you know, because these people are able to compare themselves to other people, they don't have to have the burden of experimenting everything. And they are actually have a shot at learning from other people's mistakes. Whereas I don't have a chance in hell at learning from other people's mistakes. I have to make every single mistake myself and learn from those lessons myself, which can often be a huge burden to other people, which kind of ends up destroying every child, let's be honest. Anyway, moving on. So the temples, the four temples all have, you know, deadly sins, living virtues. It's no different for the soul temple. And if you are a paid member, like in the journeyman uh, lectures right now, for the premium lectures, we are doing the deadly sin series where we're going super deep. And we actually just finished the soul temple last month. The heart temple is this month where we are doing the four heart temple types and their deadly sins and their living virtues. And let me tell you, folks. It's going to be amazing. Like, you really want to get in this. The next episode is going to be focusing on ENTP and ISFJ. Should be coming out hopefully next week. And then the episode after that, it's going to be focusing on uh, ESFP and INTJ. And let me tell you what we have, like what we got planned for you guys on those particular episodes. It goes so deep. It is absolutely groundbreaking. You literally can use the deadly sins, uh, the living virtues, the aspiration poles, the shadow poles, as well as what we're calling origins, cognitive origins. These origins, cognitive origins are so critical because you are literally able to utilize the type grid in a completely new way, an absolutely new, innovative way. And it helps extroverted thinkers type people on the type grid because it's not an if this, then that thing. It's actually a thematic approach. So you actually get to use your extroverted thinking uh, to qualify these aspects when it comes to typing other people. So, you know, if you're an extroverted thinker, it may actually benefit you more in the long run to actually be using temple exploration of the type grid instead of using interaction styles or you know expression or worldview temperaments those types of things being able to utilize temple exploration for deadly sins and living virtues to qualify and use inductive reasoning may be advantageous to you so like if you want to actually understand what those things are and how they're defined and how they interact with one another i highly recommend you actually become a paid member csjoseph.life forward slash members okay and become a journeyman member so you can get access to those premium lectures. They are totally badass and definitely some of our best work that we have ever produced for the CSJ community. Make sure you check it out. So the Soul Temple's deadly sins are wrath and lust, uh, which we did cover already in the journeyman lectures. Those lectures are already live now. Uh, so wrath is basically punishment that seeks to reestablish perceived uh, violated mor morals, rules, or boundaries. And it's so interesting that that's how wrath works because oftentimes I find uh, indignance being heavily like maybe even the root of wrath itself, which is basically behaving badly or reacting negatively to uh, perceived unfair treatment, basically. Perceived unfair treatment. doesn't mean that unfair treatment is actually taking place. It's just perceived unfair treatment. All the times I remember Robert Morel, my uh, INFJ mentor, constantly going off over and over and over and over and over again about how indignant I was constantly. How I was perceiving unfair treatment as if he was treating me unfairly when he actually wasn't. I was like, whoa, that was extremely difficult to, 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 to deal with. The other deadly sin is lust. And lust is basically an expedient means to fill the void of incompleteness, to feel whole. The object of lust can be anything. Lust people are searching for connectedness. It's like they have this huge hole inside of their soul and they're trying to connect with other people so that they can fill that hole and actually derive their identity from how intimate and how connected they are with other people. It's literally, they're, they're like identity vampires. That's what lust, deadly sin is actually all about. Being an identity vampire. 
Wow. An individuation vampire taking pieces of other people's character and turning their own character into an amalgamation of other people's character. Think about that. It's like, well, wait a minute. You go up to the ESTP, you go up to the INFJ and be like, hey... Is there anything that's actually real about you? Really? Is there is there is it is it is there any is there any such thing as you in that head or or are you just the sum total or no, well actually the average. The average of all the people you've ever met in your life. Hmm. Hashtag smug mode. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, lust types. Thank you. So <laughs> that can end up being a problem. But what about the living virtues? The living virtues are absolution and chastity. So uh, absolution is the removal of someone's guilt or one's own guilt. The soul temple seeks to be absolved from the things they've done, just as at times they advocate for the absolution of others, which, which oftentimes uh, ISTJs and ENFPs definitely do for others. And I noticed that INFJs and ESTPs are often trying to get absolution for themselves. You know, it's, it's so, you know, from, from external sources, it's, it's so funny how they often do that. Uh, and then there's uh, the other uh, living virtue of chastity. And chastity is the repression of lust in favor of developing and connecting with the identity of uh, self with others. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting to watch ENFPs and ISTJs uh, try to, you know, seek, you know, other people lusting them or other people being chased with them you know, as a result, and, and as much as, you know, the ESTP and INFJ is seeking absolution from others, even though they're not able, while the ENFP and ISTJ is able to absolve themselves, and the ESTP and the INFJ are able to objectify themselves, you know, through their deadly sin of lust. It's so fascinating how it all fits together. But if you want to find out more details on that, well, guess what? you should go watch the lecture, the Deadly Sin lectures that we have right now in the members area, because hashtag, why not? So the soul temple types oscillate between wrath and absolution and, and between lust and chastity. And you can't be lustful and chaste at the same time, just as you cannot absolve someone and be wrathful at the same time. Now, however, I have FI Trickster, and if there's an ESTP on the show right now, I guarantee you that as an FI trickster, and I bet if Raka, aka Christ Taylor himself, praise be his name, uh, if he was uh, if he was uh, here on the show with me right now, because TI trickster, I'm sure all of our decision make introverted decision making trickster functions would just be like, yeah, well, maybe I can be lustful and chaste at the same time. Maybe I can absolve someone and be wrathful at the same time. Hashtag righteous anger. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, man. You know, anything could be true and false. Anything. Anything could be good and bad. I'm sure, I'm sure we can find some neutral ground there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. So, anyway, by now you're probably wondering, okay, so how exactly are the deadly sins and uh, the living virtues of the soul temple actually expressions of character? Like, well, why does this actually matter? So, for example, regardless of the sin or living virtue being used, the focus is still ultimately on character. Every use of the, of the deadly sin or living virtue is trying to accomplish some focus on truth of character or quality of character. Think about it. If you're trying to absolve yourself, it's because you've done something wrong and you know you've done something wrong. If you're trying to absolve somebody else, it's because they've done something wrong and you know they've done something wrong. Or if you think about it from an intrinsic, extrinsic point of view, it's like, well, wait a minute. I'm absolving them because I'm guilty of the same thing, but nobody knows I'm guilty of the same thing. But here's the thing. If I absolve them now, that means when I finally get caught later, neener, 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 I'm going to be absolved then too because I set the precedent of absolution for this bad thing that I did in the past, but I did it for somebody else. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. Uh, my ENFP daughter, you know, like, like, um, uh, well, I'm actually not supposed to talk about her, so I'm not going to. Um, but uh, 
oh, my ENFP boss, like <laughs> my former ENFP boss, he'd do this, uh, he'd do this all the time. And a particular example of that is, is that like, uh, he actually, he actually broke the law one time, but then ended up giving somebody advice as to how they could like get out of, you know, the consequence of the situation, basically absolve themselves. And then they did. And then he eventually got caught himself for it later. And then all of a sudden he's been, he was absolved. He was absolved uh, about it. So it's like, oh, okay, that's fascinating, you know, because he actually referred to the previous precedent that he set up. And I'm like, oh, dang, that's like, that's like brilliant. So that's, that's how they do it. That's how they get away with everything, even though they're all affiliative, using the affiliative to their advantage. It's just how they get away. I'm just like, wow. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just hilarious. It's just absolutely hilarious um, how, how that actually happened. But it's all about absolution there, you know? And then, like, um, <laughs> so, so yeah, like, that's just an example as to how, you know, it, it really comes down to truth of character or quality of character. Because, but here's the thing, like, look at it from, like, the ESTP INFJ perspective. And, the, and you know, they're using, like, the wrath and absolution as their, their secondary deadly sin and living virtue. Oftentimes, these two types always have this attitude of, hey, you know, if other people are going to behave poorly, that gives me license to behave poorly, too, because it's like a lack of absolution. A lack of absolution can also lead to that deadly sin. It's like, hey, you know, uh, these people were not held accountable for doing this bad thing for that poor behavior. So I get to behave poorly, too, knowing full well that I am not going to get in trouble for it. It's like, hey, they got away with it. That means I get to get away with it too. That means I always get to have that choice too. And you see ESTPs and INFJs behave this way consistently. And that too can be a huge problem, you know? So it's, it's a huge problem. Just double checking. Just double checking the chat here real quick. Yeah, making sure I'm doing it right. So, but but ultimately, how, how, how is lust an expression of character? Lust is used by the soul temple to fill the void of their own identity. They seek to realize who they are by pursuing certain things with the utmost passion, which is basically what I've already said. So I'm not really going to, uh, I'm not really going to uh, hammer that in. Uh, and then I'll just say the note here for the wrath is an expression of character. Rack, wrath seeks to burn the poor qualities of others away by reestablishing the boundaries and rules that Soul Temple believes leads to good character. The Soul Temple views wrath as ultimately doing the other person a favor, just as touching a hot stove is a life, is a life lesson for all. But again, with my previous example with wrath, I, there's no point in me going further on that. Now, what about absolution? Absolution uh, is, uh, removes the guilt of what other people or themselves have done and gives them a second chance. Absolution gives a chance for redemption to other people by providing future opportunities to prove their quality of character. It is evident that in some of the Soul Temple uh, belief, uh, people can change. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean... I've noticed, I've noticed that, you know, expert sensing demon within ENFPs, uh, within the soul temple really, really struggle giving, allowing other people to change at some time, you know, and it's weird because they oscillate between like, oh yeah, everyone can change. It's all good. Free for all. And then they're, and then they end up having, then they end up having the, um, then they end up having the, uh, uh, the perspective of, oh, well, uh, you know, no one's going to change. You know, it's like they move the goalpost when it's convenient for them or when the judgment is convenient for them because they're still prioritizing their own self-absolution over the absolution of others, even though the absolution of others actually directly impacts them as well. And I'm just like, ah, stop doing that. The thing is, is that ISTJs, they, they do it too. They do it too. It's just that SE demon is just there. But ISTJs, it's kind of more of like a position of like, you know, hey, it's it, it's it's all about precedent. You know, it's not so much about like what 
what I'm able to get away with in this particular situation. It's more of like, hey, it set the precedent. So the precedent applies to me as much as it applies to you. And that's why they're always trying to find a middle ground. That's why they're always trying to level the playing field from that perspective. And I find that so fascinating. I mean, I got into an argument with an ISTJ in my own home at one point in time over how his girlfriend was basically being a hoe. Literally, his INFP girlfriend was being a hoe. And I'm like, wow, like, really? And I was challenging him on this. He's like, I just want to find some middle ground. I just want to find some middle ground. He's trying to do anything he could to, like, absolve his INFP girlfriend for her hoeish behavior. And I just, all I want to do is just barf. Because I'm just like, really? No. There's no actual justice here. She is going to take advantage of you. You're planning on marrying this woman? No, thanks. But, you know, it's it's totally cool with you that, that your woman was uh, was flirting with me. When the reality of the situation is I'm you're like one of my bros and I have your back and I'm going to tell you if your woman is like being a little uh, exhibiting some promiscuous hoish behavior behind your back. Really? Really? Is that what you're going to do? And it's just, I, you know, that, that's that's absolution gone wrong. It's gone, gone way too far. You know, and again, folks, don't forget, just because it's a living virtue doesn't mean it's a good thing. Just because it's a deadly sin does not mean it's a bad thing it's 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 just it's just utterly utterly ridiculous what about chastity as a rep as a as an expression of character chastity represses lustful pursuits in favor of connecting with the identity of another person chastity means doing what it takes to bond with someone else you know and this is one thing that i can absolutely say about my estp wife she definitely goes out of her way to bond with me and let me tell you folks it is really hard for an ESTP to bind with an ENTP. It is extremely difficult, but she is constantly trying to figure out how to do it. What is the how to? I mean, she'll send me, you know, relationship therapy related YouTube videos all the time and be like, hey, I learned this new thing that will improve our relationship because she's trying. She's trying to do what she can to make it work. She's trying to undo all of the gaslighting uh, that people have had. She is trying to improve her character on a consistent basis in order to further bond with me as a result. And the thing is, is that when she's not focused on bonding through her being chased, she starts to objectify certain things. She starts to commit idolatry. She ends up putting me on a pedestal. And then I, and then, or, or ends up treating me like I'm some kind of car in the garage that needs some maintenance, you know, that kind of thing, because I'm actually an object instead of actually a human as a result. And because I'm being treated like an object and not, not, and my humanity is basically gone. This is why, like, I don't even have any character anymore. I'm being treated as if I'm a person who lacks character entirely. You know, that's, that's literally what the lust, deadly sin can actually do to other people if you're not aware of that. So you got to be careful. You got to really watch out. So furthermore, okay, this is, this is, this, this is where it gets a little bit interest, interesting. So we, we, we've been talking about this thing called vehicles, vehicles in, um, uh, in the deadly sin lectures, which we renamed, we renamed it, uh, changed the name to origins, cognitive origins. So basically, you know, your living virtue and your deadly sin are just two of the four expressions of your origin. You start off with your origin, your cognitive origin, and your origin is ultimately trying to, you know, as your origin is expressed within your temple, it will come out either as the deadly sin behavior or it will come out as living virtue behavior or what we call an aspiration pull behavior or a shadow pull behavior, uh, which more to that uh, in the uh, premium lectures at csjoseph.life forward slash members. Um, wow, I'm like a walking salesman or sitting in the Subaru salesman today. I am the, uh, the Subi salesman. Nice. I definitely have like gained a new achievement, you know, in life all of a sudden. Like if I had cool uh, graphic effects, be that World of Warcraft achievement popping up at the very bottom at this very moment. Ding. So yeah. But uh, the two origins of character, according to the Soul Temple, are justification and intimacy. Justification as attached to the wrath deadly sin, and intimacy attached to the lust deadly sin. They exist in a yin and yang equilibrium shared between the four types within the Soul Temple. 
So while justification is primary to ENFP and ISTJ and intimacy is primary to ESTP and INFJ, guess what? All four of the types use both and use both simultaneously constantly. My ESTP wife absolutely has to have justification for like all of her actions. Uh, INFJs in my life, it's the same thing, the same thing. Uh, men, women, it doesn't matter. Does it doesn't matter. And I mean, I've also had the opportunity, you know, to to be, you know, intimate with with INFJs in my life. And it, 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 it's just so fascinating. It's so fascinating how how like they themselves, you know, really need justification for their actions, or at least need somebody else to help them find justification for their actions, even though their their primary deadly sin is 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 lust their living virtue is is chastity and ultimately they're going out of their way you know to have intimacy but oftentimes because they're getting justification from another person they're actually interpreting that as an aspect of the intimacy they're actually looking for which if you think about it that's really really great and just kind of how those things actually fit together and most people aren't even aware of how those things, you know, don't fit together. They really do fit all together. It's all, like it like we said, it's a yin and yang equilibrium. Justification and intimacy cannot be present at the same time, however. Intimacy is absent uh justification and justification is absent intimacy. But just like in the yin and yang model, there is a drop of justification within intimacy and a drop of intimacy within justification. Again, just using that model, uh, that example that I said just, just before I read that, it applies. That was just an example. So cool. But let's let's talk about like the soul temple from the perspective of the great beyond or the overall, the, the macro uh, perspective. The soul temple represents the collective extroverted intuition and introverted feeling, as we discussed earlier, for all humanity. The collective input perception and the feedback judgment. They are the input for perception for humanity, but they are the feedback piece. Because remember, input, process, output, feedback. That's literally the system that our minds follow for perception and for judgment consistently. It's the same thing over and over. That's just how it works. That's how they all work, right? So, uh, so the soul temple represents the extroverted intuition, perception, input. It also represents the introverted feeling, judgment, feedback pieces of those systems simultaneously. The soul temple ultimately wants to be desired. It's so interesting because one of the ways that you can hurt an ESTP, not just like my ESTP wife, but I'm, but I'm serious, like any ESTP, they really do actually understand what it means to feel unwanted, even though they have any demon. They really actually know. They really know. In as much as myself for the heart temple, I have extroverted sensing demon, and I really, really know what it's like for people to be disloyal and to not stick around. This is especially evident if you watch uh, Vampire Diaries. Uh, I think it's season two, episode seven or eight, where Elijah, the original, shows up all the way until season four, episode 20 of uh, of the Vampire Diaries, starting with the originals episode. And then there's that spinoff series called The Originals. And there's this character, he's an ENTP, his name is Klaus Michelson. He's like the best character, best vampire character I've ever seen. And I completely identify uh, with him like all the way. Like he's my most favorite fictional character, INTJ focused ENTP. And he is obsessed with loyalty. Well, guess what, folks? I also am obsessed with loyalty in as much as the ESTPs in my life are obsessed with people actually wanting them. So like that's it's a thing, it literally is a thing. I mean, you, and going back to uh, Vampire Diaries, uh, Damon Salvatore is an ESTP himself, and he knows when he's not wanted, and it really, really screws with him to the point where he'll lash out with his wrath, deadly sin at other people whenever he's being indignant, perceiving that he's being unfairly unwanted by other people, even though he's done a ton of contribution. And the character Elena, who is actually like Nina Dobrev in real life, is actually an INTJ. And she plays Catherine in that show, who is also an INTJ. 
But then Elena, the doppelganger, blah, 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 uh, hypergamous ho herself, just saying, uh, is an ESTJ. She's an ESTJ, and she oftentimes, you know, makes Damon feel unwanted, and it's kind of ridiculous to kind of watch how all that plays out. So there it is. Uh, that's a thing you just kind of want to, like, you know, it just plays out archetypically within our fiction on a regular basis. And a lot of people just are kind of like unaware of like how that happens. So yeah, uh, ultimately the soul temple wants to be desired, but also wants to present to possess uh, moral quality, which again, that's how it's all centered on, uh, on character. So yeah. Um, Okay, I think I think I hammered that piece pretty well with my examples there. Cool. And then uh, how how does the soul temple actually interact with other temples? So the soul temple sits in orbit with the heart temple. So orbit basically means it uh, if the soul temple is the ego temple, that would mean its shadow or its unconscious temple is ultimately the heart temple, which guess what is also abstract. I mean, you just look at this with our just regular four sides of the mind. I'm an ENTP ego. I have an INTJ shadow, aka unconscious. Well, guess what? That shadow is abstract, just like my ego is. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's... You know, there you go. It's in reflection with the mind temple, reflection representing uh, the uh, the subconscious approach, and it is in axis with the body temple. Now, this is where people usually freak out when we're saying this. Now, I understand that when we're talking about orbit, reflection, and axis uh, functions uh, within the four sides of the mind for each individual person, they actually behave differently. When you're actually looking at it from a temple perspective, because the, you can look at the four temples as like a base blueprint for the cognition of humanity itself, the base blueprint, well, there is technically no ego. Now, for humanity itself, I mean, you, you could almost say like, like all the four temples together and all the associated origins, functions, uh, poles, uh, deadly sins, living virtues, those things, you could almost make an argument, okay, yeah, that's the mind of God, which is, which is in of itself a grand ego of some kind. It doesn't have a super ego, right? But we have a super ego within humanity because huma humans are just pieces of that huge temple uh, uh, blueprint, basically, for human cognition. It's just, it's just little pieces. That's all that is, you know? And so because of that axis reflection uh, and orbit behave a little bit differently. So in order to actually understand this uh, a little bit more, so a person's ability for themselves to be good is influenced by what they love and whether or not they're pursuing what they love, which is like the heart temple perspective. Passion is an inseparable part of identity. Human beings corrode when they don't have a purpose. Uh, people learn who they are and can become better people when they know more, uh, which is, you know, the mind temple perspective. The soul temple types must learn to educate themselves and others. Sometimes people just don't understand. So what this is, is that like, when you look at the four sides of your mind and you're part of the soul temple, you're an ENFP or an ISTJ or an ESTP or an INFJ, you have your four sides. And yes, your four sides represent you being in the soul temple overall, but you still have all four of the temples still represented within your head because each of the four sides of your mind has a temple slant, okay? It has a temple slant, right? And those temple slants can cause the size of your mind to behave differently. It can cause uh, your soul temple attributes to be expressed in a different manner, okay? It, 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 than, than what would people would typically expect. Again, this is a system of dynamics. This is not a system of statics, okay? So just be aware of that. Be aware of that. All right, just let me, um, okay, I, funny joke in the uh, chat, folks, funny joke. So lastly, action matters. The soul temple types must learn to value the importance of action, like getting things done or having something to show for all of the character in the world. Jesus, a soul temple Templar said, you will know them by their fruits. 
Soul Temple, you must first produce fruit. Fruit being actions within this direction. Because the thing is, it doesn't matter. Like, you have to prove your character. If you're not able to prove your character with actions, and as much as, like, you know, um, the Apostle Paul said, you know, faith without works is dead. If you don't have actions to prove your faith, then your faith is worthless and probably doesn't actually exist. You know, again, you have to prove your character with actions. And that's ultimately the body temple perspective because that is what drives the body temple influence on the soul temple is what drives the soul temple to actually take concrete action and maybe set a precedent, right? Sometimes actions set precedents that they could use for absolution later or wrath later, for example, right? That's what it's all about. Also, the soul temple must realize that part of your identity comes from your legacy. Whether you like it or not, your parents and family, culture and history is a part of who you are. Your identity does not exist in a vacuum and you cannot completely separate yourself as an individual from everything else. You still have to succumb to the influences and potentially the power of other human beings, whether you like it or not. And you also have to recognize that that still impacts your identity. It still impacts your individuation. It still impacts your character as a person. And oftentimes Soul Temple thinks like, hey, you know, I could really be that lone wolf when in the reality of the situation is they're really blind to the fact that they aren't actually a lone wolf at all especially since these four types uh, you know they have the less deadly sin and the less deadly sin is all about having a sense of belonging and filling that hole or that lack of belonging they just want to belong they just want to fit in and they have that insane desire to fit in anyway each temple's objective can only be realized when they allow for the influence of the other temples to be heard it is no different than cognitive integration yeah, guys, just, just understand, like, humanity ultimately has to, you may have, like, let me start over. You may have certain preferences of how you like to do things in your life, but eventually you're still going to have to prepare yourself to do everything. Soul Temple or otherwise, the other four temples will still influence your behavior in some capacity. You need to keep that open, okay? It's, it's, it's really important, you know. It's not good enough. Like if you're not pursuing what you love and in and in, in, in leaning into that heart temple perspective, do you really actually have character? If you're not actually going to become a better person because you're not willing to learn, are, is that a smart decision? I mean, that's the mind temple in, influence to learn to be better people. I remember, I remember Railgun telling me that she didn't need to read any books because she had it all figured out. And I thought that was so funny to me. Now she's constantly reading all of the time and getting herself educated and learning to become a better person because she realized that that was a cornerstone of her own character development as a person, as she is a member of the soul temple. And that's the mind temple influence on her. So and we already said that you have to prove your character with concrete action. That is the body temple influence all right and each of the four temples have these additional influences on your behavior as a person so but yeah i think that just about covers this particular episode and shockingly enough we actually made this in under an hour awesome and just like sarah would say and chris would say cool beans can I just say that I hate that? I hate this whole cool beans thing. Every time someone says cool beans, I want to say hot beans or crushed beans or I don't care about beans or like, why are we talking about beans? I hate beans. Beans increase estrogen in men and destroy testosterone. They also feed Helicobacter pylori and destroy your health ultimately in the long run. Why do, why are beans cool? Are they cool because they weren't cooked? Are they cool because we're saying, hey, you know, beans are pretty cool. You know, you, you can increase your own coolness if you have beans too. I, I just, I can't deal with this. I, I can't. I literally, I just can't deal with this. Fresh beans. Okay, apparently fresh beans matters. So anyway, I am finished with this lecture, folks. Uh, if you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, please comment, please like, please subscribe, do all those amazing things. 
Uh, this is going out to everyone on our email list. If you want to get on our email list, go to csjoseph.life. Uh, either take the personality test or get our companion guide. Scroll below to get your free copy of the type grid in our companion guide uh, below the button to take the test on the front page of our website, csjoseph.life. Do it. So anyway, folks, uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys tonight on, um, you know, Discord. Later.